Okay, hi everyone. This is uh, Rich Jr. from Click2Think.com. Um, the reason I'm making this video is because I actually have a lot of friends that I've been talking to lately that didn't even know about this subject. So this subject is the importance of omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. Now, uh, this is important for our body because we need omega-3s. Everyone already knows about omega-3 fatty acids and why they're important. They're important for the skin, our eyes, our blood, uh, blood vessels, and all that good stuff for our body. Now, we also have omega-6s, which are also important for our body as well in some of the same aspects. But the thing about omega-6s is, is that they also create inflammation in the body. So why would that be important? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and go through the resources that I've been using online in order to find this information. Uh, but I've been studying this for quite a while, so I just figured I'd make a video to show people why this is important. Okay, so the reason um, you want to watch your ratio, if you guys have heard of this, it's, usually, it's omega-6 to 3 ratio. And the reason that this is important is because omega-6s are a polyunsaturated fatty acid and see as you can see here from um, and all my uh, URLs will be up here if you guys want to look at them you guys can go here and you can also um, click on the link to this video or it will be under the description where you can go to my blog and uh, you'll be able to click on the links right away to make it easier for you guys okay so from uh, Dr. Mercola um, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce his name. So what he's saying here is that uh, polyunsaturated fats as omega th as omega sixes, um, what they do is they stimulate right here is what he's saying a uh, inflammatory response in the body. Now the reason that is bad is he's showing that he's telling you that um, this basically creates a oxidized state in your body or saying that these molecules, these fatty acid molecules, are pretty unstable. Um, the reason that that's, that that's bad is because, as you can see right here, uh, they become fragile and they're prone to oxidation, and this leads to health issues, um, such as um, cardiovascular uh, disease. So why would that be bad? Why is cardiovascular disease bad for an increase in immune response? Well, the reason that that's bad is because uh, these lipids, these fats, uh, they create a, as you can see here, the, infl the inflammatory cells accumulate in plaques within the walls of blood vessels. So what happens here is these plaques, as everyone's probably already heard this already, is these plaques um, accumulate inside your blood vessels, and what they do is they narrow your blood flow. So this could cause increased blood pressure so this could cause hypertension and as you can see here that's why this is important to cardiovascular disease um, and as you can see here it's also saying that the blood flow is you know you're not going to get a good oxygen response to your tissues it's also going to decrease oxygen delivery okay so here's a um, this is a much better uh, resource right here from the uh, US National Library of Medicine so this is just an abstract but um, this is basically stating that Western diets are extremely high in omega-6s and somewhat low in omega-3 fatty acids so omega-3 fatty acids are the ones that we really want more of um, but here in the West in our Western diet we actually have we're actually consuming less of these and the ways that you can get this is everyone already knows you're gonna take supplements for like a good fish oil or you you can take uh, flax seeds but if you're gonna take flax, flax seeds then what you need to do is make sure that you grind them up that way your body can absorb these fatty acids if you just take it as the seed then your body is not going to absorb those fatty acids and nutrients okay so here in the Western diet we have excessive amounts of omega-6 fatty acids and this isn't really how we evolve so that's basically what this abstract is saying is that genetically we're evolved to consume more omega 
three fatty acids than omega-6 but right now because of our high-paced society and how we work and how we live agriculture all that we eat a lot of processed foods processed foods is very high in omega-6s so right here um, this they're saying that omega-6 the higher omega-6 ratio or to three ratio is actually going to promote um, pathogenesis of many diseases including cardiovascular disease which we have already talked about cancer and importantly here inflammatory and autoimmune autoimmune diseases so the essential thing here is that we don't really need to increase our inflammatory our inflammatory response in our body system we could just let that happen naturally we don't need to what we're doing is just we're increasing it increasing it probably I've seen somewhere uh, so if we're supposed to get the recommended it is and you can see right here um, there's a lot of ratios of saying you should get a omega-6 to omega-3 ratio should be the 4 to 1 ratio a lot of sources say 1 to 1 ratio but they're saying a lot of health professionals are saying that in the American diet we're getting somewhere near like 10 to 1 to maybe even 20 to 1 or even more depending on how much bad food you eat okay I'm gonna go to another source here so what this is uh, uh, in this study, uh, they just hot hypothesized that uh, anti-inflammatory benefits of higher dietary omega-3 compared to omega-6 fatty acids may modulate inflammatory uh, processes and reduce death risk. So this this is saying that the omega-3. This is why it's important to get your omega-3 fatty acids inside your diet so um, here what it's saying is a higher dietary omega-6 to omega-3 ratio saying that you're getting more omega-6s is associated with inf inflammatory responses within your body and a trend towards higher death risk in renal failure patients or kidney disease. I just thought this would be um, a good source just to show you. I mean, obviously not everyone's going to have kidney disease, kidney disease or any type of renal failure or maybe not even any renal issues, but this is just another source to show you that why it's important to get a balanced omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. We don't want to get too much of our omega-6s. Now what I do is, this is from Wikipedia, so it's not a great source, but I have checked um, most of these sources right here that they're using for their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, which you can see right here, and it lists what they are. So for, for salmon, for instance, um, everyone knows that salmon is high in omega-3s. And from here, here you can see there's no omega-6 content and there is omega-3 content. Um, for sardines, you're going to have a 2 to 1, so this would be like a really good ratio right here. Now uh, tuna in the can, they're saying has a 13 to 1 ratio. I don't really consider this really that bad because olive oil is actually suggested to be a good oil um, and we're and as humans we're able to absorb it into our bodies so this isn't this wouldn't be horrible for me but then again I wouldn't go too far out of my way to eat only tuna you can see you have so many more options in fish here to get your omega-3 content like you have so many different more uh, different avenues to go here um, here are your nuts. Now this is, um, I think this is where a lot of people get a little confused. They always think that nuts are, and they are, they're very good for you. Um, and the, any time that you go into a supermarket, it's going to say, hey, these nuts are heart healthy. It's like, okay, well, is it, like, it also depends, like, you're not supposed to eat, like, a whole can a day. You're only supposed to eat, like, a handful a day. But as you can see here, like, 
a lot of people eat almonds and a lot of people love almonds. I love almonds, but I don't eat them I don't eat them that much anymore. I only go with walnuts right here and you can see down here walnuts has a 4 to 1 ratio and that's why I go for those. Um you can see pecans have a 22 to 1, so it's uh still a little high and then right here you can see sp uh pistachios, who doesn't like those? A 50 to one ratio that's pretty high uh, pumpkin seeds and sesame seeds are much higher and they don't have yeah they do not have peanuts on here but peanuts are extremely high in omega-6 content so that's just something to think about if we go down here to the oils um, olive oil um, depending on the different sources that you look at um, olive oil usually has anywhere from a 9 to 1 ratio to a 14 to 1 ratio right here it's saying that it has a 13 to 1 ratio so I would say that the source is pretty uh, pretty spot on um, walnuts it has a 5 to 1 ratio that looks pretty good flaxseed flaxseed oil I wouldn't suggest flaxseed oil because it goes rancid really fast but um, if you get the seeds and make sure that they're grinded up then you're going to be able to get your fatty, your omega-3 fatty acids really fast that way. And as you can see here, it's very low content of the omega-6s and high in the omega-3s. And this is for your flaxseed. Okay, also, you can see many foods have this. This is not a end-all list right here. This is just an example to show you guys what all has omega-3s and 6s. But bananas, for instance, have omega-6 to 3 ratio, which is actually pretty good, I think. I think it's like a uh, 2 to 1 or, or something close to that, I believe. Okay, so if you, let's say that you're looking for a food that you want to check your omega-6 to 3 ratio because you want to make sure that you're getting a good ratio, what I do is I go to uh, uh, nutritiondata.self.com. This is a really good site. And right here, what I've done is I've taken one tablespoon, which is usually, which is one serving of olive oil. And this is usually something that I cook with or you put in your salad or however you guys like it. Now, this is a great site because it's going to show you all the nutritional facts on it. And it's also going to show you all the vitamins that it has in it. So it's high in um, vitamin E and K. And then you're going to see it also shows you all, your, all the minerals. Now, it doesn't have that many minerals, but this is, olive oil is a great source of vitamin E, as you can see here. Okay, so now let's look at our fat, fatty acids. So you're looking for food, and you're like, okay, um, what is my omega-6 to omega-3 ratio? Here it is right here. You just have to switch it around. Right now it's upside down. So your omega-6 to 3 ratio here is going to be almost a 13 to 1 ratio. So if we look back at this um, site here, we can see that the oil, olive oil, is giving us a 13 to 1 ratio. That pretty much matches what we have here. If you look at other sources too, this is going to be pretty spot on. Uh, like I said, it's it's usually within this range, anywhere from a 9 to 1 to a 14 to 1 ratio. Um, and this is pretty much it. Uh, I just wanted to make a video explaining the importance of omega-6 to 3 ratio and why it's important for the body. So basically we don't want to have a increased response to or an increased inflammatory response in our body and we can keep that balanced by increasing our omega-3 content. The best way to do that is obviously to eat fish. Uh, it's always recommended to eat fish like salmon uh, three times a week. You can also take a good supplement that can help you get that content as well. Um, if you're going to take the supplements, I just ask that you research it and get a get it from a company that is uh, respected and has a good potency of of uh, nutrients within their supplements. So you don't get a watered down version of it. You want to get your body to absorb what it can. And um, don't forget this side. This is a very important side. I use this for almost everything. It's going to give you all your daily values of everything. This is a great way to track what you're trying to do daily. Um, and that's it. If you guys have any questions, please leave some comments below and uh, please uh, visit our blog and let us know how you like it. Thank you.